guys, I, like, I... Saying that this is cool is just, I don't think it begins to explain the, the intrigue or how... I'll put it this way. There's always something. This was the message that was etched into my mind as a teenager. A kind and funny woman from my church spoke those words to me around our kitchen table one night as we were simply talking about life. She said that I probably won't feel the impact of her words then, because after all, I was just a sheltered teenager that didn't really understand what it meant to be an adult. But then slowly as time pressed forward, my responsibilities grew. I had to learn how to manage my time with no parental supervision. I had to manage the little money that I could scrape together to pay for gas and food while commuting to college. And then my responsibilities grew even more. Navigating responsibilities as a son, brother, friend, student, musician, intern, boyfriend, employee, fiance, freelancer, husband, engineer, father. The responsibilities keep growing and they keep changing. And you might wonder, like, what does this have to do with smart homes? And I'm getting to that because you see the list of things that I need to keep track of at this age of life is a lot. And it's probably the same for a lot of you that are watching this. I often find myself prioritizing like the important stuff and hoping to remember the more mundane, trivial things of life. I've tried lists, calendar, event reminders, to do's, apps, and to a degree, they all work when I remember to look at them. But I find that they never really last long as they don't really integrate into my life. I find myself having to revolve around those lists and apps instead of those apps and tools revolving and adapting to me. Ideally, I don't want to think about what's next or manually go through a mundane list. I would rather have something more akin to, let's say, a secretary, right? Someone who can look at all of the mundane things in my house, my calendars, in my to-do lists, and summarize the things that are important and possibly even add to them. But I don't know about you, right? I don't have secretary money. However, with a bit of creativity and GPT, we can build a secretary. And it's a lot easier than you think. All right. La 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 la. Okay, so I'm gonna go over several different levels of this summarization automation, starting with level one. Now level one is the simplest and I'm simply showing you this because it will be like the ground floor for understanding the rest of them. All of the information here is gonna be hard coded so you can see quickly what it's anticipating and how we want it to respond. So let's start from the top. We have here three different parts of this automation and this is going to stay consistent for the rest of them you have the first part which is a trigger the trigger can be whatever you want in this case we're going to use the inject node you have the body of it and that's going to be these four nodes and these are the open ai intent nodes that i created this is what makes it very simple and easy to add gpt into the mix and to execute this type of automation the last part is the output, and that's how we give ourselves the information. So in our case, we're simply going to use a debug node and just print this information out here on the side. With that, let's get into it. We have in the system node, which describes to the system how it should operate. Here, I'm basically outlining that it's a personal assistant. I'm telling it that for dishwashers, just tell me the state when it's dirty. I'm also telling it that for any event that is within 24 hours of the current time, I want to know about it. Otherwise, if it is outside of that 24 hour time or if it had passed, don't mention anything about it. And then I think. And then the last major part of this is I gave it a list of all of the events and the states that I want it to be aware of. In our case, it's aware of the dishwasher and that its current state is dirty, and it's aware of these three events. I'm also passing at the time, and I've set the time to January 15th, 10 p.m. It's not January 15th, it's some other time, but uh, that's what it's currently set at right now. I also want you to notice that for the events, two of them has passed already. This is on the 15th from four to five. This is on the 15th from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Both of those, according to our current time, has passed. The only one that's applicable is this physical therapy one that's happening the following day at 1.30 p.m. 
So when we run this, we expect it to talk about the dishwasher because it's in a dirty state, and we also expect it to talk about the physical therapy event. Let's see what happens. Here we go. So here in the payload, we can see that it has that we have one event coming up within the next 24 hour, and that's the physical therapy one. Also, it's talking about the dishwasher and that it's dirty and that it needs to be attended to. This is perfect. This is level one. This was hard coded, but you now see the gist of what needs to happen. So now let's get on to level two so you can see what it looks like dynamically. Within level two, we have three new nodes that you should look at. The first one is this template node. Specifically, it's called the render template node. This node is special and it's pretty cool, especially when using it with GPT because it allows you to essentially use YAML in order to find information. The same way that you can look at the developer tools within Home Assistant and under the template section, you can play around with the templates and kind of query for data. This does exactly the same thing except all of that information that you use within that template node and the developer tools gets passed along within the automation as text that GPT can read. You should see where this is going. So for this one, we're using the now function, which prints out the date dynamically so we can see the actual date and time. And then we also see here the dishwasher, we can grab the actual state of it. And the only peculiar thing we have here is this events. You'll see what I'm gonna do with this shortly. So this particular node is one that connects to my calendar and sends me back information from that calendar that I set up. Uh, Inside, when you what you can see here is there's this config. Uh, I don't need to really get into that right now because you can set it up, like you can follow the instructions for it to set it up, but it allows you to essentially run this and grab any calendar information that you need based off of these criteria. The only thing here that is of note is that I'm telling it to grab all of the events that are within 16 hours of this current time. If you wanna know more about this node, if you go to here, manage palette, It's called the iCal events. This doesn't come by default within Node Red. I'm only using this because this came before Home Assistant added calendars into its primary uh, way of working. Um, now that there's calendars, I'm going to show you how that works, but I'm going to show you how this particular node work just in case you don't find the native version robust enough. At least you have this option. The last node that I want to take note of is this new function node in it. I'm looping through all of the calendar events. So it's gonna come once the calendar fetches information, it's gonna come through this payload. I'm mapping through the payload and I'm simply grabbing the summary, which is basically the, the description of that event, as well as the date. And this is gonna have both the beginning and end date. I think that's how it, it uh, creates it. Um, and we're simply taking, looking for that events within that YAML. And just to point that out, that YAML value is here, right? So it's taking all of this, it's finding the current date, it's finding the state of the dishwasher, and it's printing this out, and it's pushing it into this part, um, it's pushing it into this property called a YAML. And then we're grabbing that YAML and we're replacing that events with the events that we got from the calendar here. That's why we've done it this way. We're simply substituting it out since we can't get it from the actual YAML within Home Assistant. If you remember in the system node in the previous one, we've hard coded this information. Because we now have this stuff within that YAML property, we can dynamically add that to the system by simply referencing it here in single curly braces. Now, when this particular node runs, it's going to replace YAML with all of that information. So that way we can add in dynamic information, which is pretty cool. I've altered the date time on the computer. So that way it can give me a different time. So that way the stuff in the calendar can show up appropriately. Uh, but here's what it's going to look like. So here it's saying that we have uh, some pest solution people coming through. We have physical therapy that's happening. And then we also have uh, swimming that's happening as well. And then music lessons. And then also the dishwasher is dirty. 
all of that is correct. Again, I had to update the date time on the computer so that way it will show all of this information, but um, all of this is correct. And this is being dynamically fetched from my calendar. As I mentioned a little earlier, 2.5 uses the actual in calendar integration within Home Assistant in order to do the same thing. So if you don't want to use this particular node, you can just swap that out right here with this call service node and reference the calendar. So if we take a quick look, right, we're using in the domain called calendar, we are going to use a service called list events. Uh, don't use list events, use get events instead. So I have here the entity that's pointing to the calendar that I want to reference. It's blurred out for obvious reasons. And then here is something interesting, the duration. The duration is technically referencing the hours, minutes, seconds away from the current start time. Now, if you don't specify a start time, it says here or in the documentations that it's going to use the current time. So whatever this current time is, it's just going to start there if nothing is provided. And then this is referencing or saying that from the current time, I want everything that's 24 hours from now. Realistically, when we run this, we should get exactly the same response or something similar. Okay, so here it's saying that we have the pest salute, the pest people, music meeting for four, and uh, and the dishwasher. So the one thing it didn't do is it did not omit, um, it, it did not add in the physical therapy. The time for that one has probably elapsed in terms of its end time, which is why it probably didn't show that up. And we can kind of verify that stuff down here too as well if we look at the YAML. Something that I did want to point out is that because we're using it natively, we no longer need to go and use the map that we saw before. When we looked into the previous one, right, this merge events had this particular map that went through each of the events and kind of reduced it down to something smaller. Uh, we don't need to do that for this particular one because the calendar node is already condensed already. So all of the information it passes is useful to us. So. I would say as you're going through this, keep that in mind that the more information that you send to GPT, one, the more it has to do and the more likely it could get something wrong. But um, on the same side, right, you're going to be sending a lot more tokens, which will burn through the amount that you would have to pay at the end of the month. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. When we look at the render template node, remember, this is a node that allows us to write YAML. We have additionally two loops. The first loop is to simply look for everything that has the name battery within its entity name. And we're printing out the state of those batteries. So the battery level. And then we also have one that's lo looping through all of the lights. And we're looking for lights that have the state of unavailable. And we're printing all of those lights out. With the addition of these two, we now know the state of the dishwasher. We're now going to substitute all of the events based off of what we're going to get back from the call service node. We also are going to know the state of all of the batteries and we're going to know the state of all of the lights, or at least we're going to know which lights are unavailable. Merging it is still the same. We're only substituting out the events. Now that we've added more information, we're going to have to get more specific with what we tell GPT. So in the system node, again, same stuff from before, same thing about the dishwasher, same thing about the events, but now we have here we're only asking for information about batteries that are 10% and lower. And we're also asking for a list of all of the unavailable devices. Let's see what it says. Okay. Again, it talked about the dishwasher. It talks about the music meeting that's supposed to be happening uh, at 4 PM. It says that no batteries are below 10% and the following are unavailable. Let's move on. Level four, as you know, Home Assistant has added support for calendars as well as now to do's specifically within the to do's. We're able to now query for that information. So we're going to do that now with this particular call service node. This one we're adding on top. We're looking at the domain to do. We're going to use the service get items. This is a voicemail to do that I've set up. You'll see what that's about in another video. Further down, we have here in the data status needs action, which is simply telling it to look at all of the to do items that haven't been addressed yet.
one important call out that I want to make for both the calendar call service and this to do call service is that that output needs to be there. By default, you're not going to see anything there. You're going to have to make sure that you set a property to this results. That way, once it resolves, it will put that information within that property that you've set. Without it, it's just going to come up blank and you're going to be very confused. So we're going to be outputting the results into this particular property called to do's. And similar to the events, take a look at this template. We now have this to do's right here. We're going to do the same thing that we did with the events with to do's where we're going to substitute it out with the information that we got from the call service node. Everything else is the same. So when we look at the merge events, the events are being replaced as well as the to do's are being replaced. If this looks like a lot of code, don't worry. I'm going to make all of these flows available to you within Chaperone. You can just simply copy and paste the JSON and import it into your system so you can see the four different levels that I have here. Granted, you're still going to have to update them because they're going to be pointing to things that you don't have, but at least you can see the structure of it. Now, notice that I said, what should I know about? I'm it sounds very generic and, and plain, but something that I ran across the other night was when I was testing this out, when I told it to summarize here, when I told it to summarize the following events in a simple to easy understand way, it simply, it prioritized the events and kind of ignored a lot of the other stuff. So remember this particular open AI system has a lot of information in it in terms of how it should respond and how it should interpret the information. Additionally, I've added in here instructions for what to do with the to do's for the to do's. I want them to mention any to do that is due today, yesterday, or tomorrow, and any to do that is older than one day or older than yesterday to just simply state the number of to do's that are that old. So if I have a to do that's, let's say, due today, it's going to tell me about that specific to do. However, if that to do was supposed to be done, let's say five days ago, four days ago, three days ago, then it's not going to tell me about that specific to do. It should simply say that, hey, you have one overdue to do or something along those lines. Now, because there's a lot of instructions inside here, if I get super specific with the instructions with inside the user node, then it kind of negates the stuff here. Like it still uses information within the system node, but it, it kind of hones in on what the user is asking for. So I, this is like the balancing act that you're going to have to do with GPT. This is not anything that has to do with AI intent, but more so just the way LLMs work. You have to kind of do this prompt engineering in order to get what you're looking for. Additionally, because you have to do this type of prompt engineering, it also means that testing this is kind of hard. And it also means that it's much easier to get flaky, inconsistent results just due to the nature of what it is. So let's see what it says. So we're one expecting it to talk about the dishwasher being dirty. We're going to expect it to talk about the events that's due for today. I think at this point, there's only one. It's going to talk about the to do's and just simply mention that there's a to do pending. This to do is, I think, four or five days old, according to the current date time that I set this to. And then it may talk about the battery states as well, because we have that in there. Um, and is there anything else? I think those are the oh, and not just the battery states, but it's also it should mention about anything that's unavailable. So like any lights that are unavailable, otherwise it may not say anything about it. But I don't think there's any unavailable lights. So let's just see what it does. All right. So talked about the dishwasher. That is correct. You have an event music starting today at 4 p.m. That is correct. There's one to do whose date is more than one day old. Perfect. And then it's talk, telling me about devices that are unavailable. And these are all the unavailable things. And remember, I told it that for anything that's unavailable, it's supposed to tell me about it or list it out. If they aren't unavailable, it shouldn't say anything. And same thing for the battery states. And I think all of this is good. All of this is good for what it is, but I, I wanna show you more. I wanna take this to another level. I want you to get a good understanding as to how AI intent can enable you to do so much more. This right here is the good night routine. I also have a good morning routine and they're essentially the same, 
but they do slightly different things. Where they differ the most is in their triggering and in their output. And if you remember what I told you, we have three different parts. We have the trigger, we have the body, which does the work, and then we have the output. For the trigger, for this, the good night one is a little bit more involved. We have here this bedtime state. It's watching a helper that is a schedule helper. And I've set in that schedule helper all the days for each day, which is what time we need to go to bed and what time we wake up. And based off of that time, as that time elapses, this will trigger off and on accordingly. Essentially, we're looking at that particular uh, state and we're waiting for it to trigger on. So whenever that bedtime state turns on, and then this whole entire automation will fire off. We also have a manual trigger button here where I can press it on a dashboard and it starts this process as well, just in case for some reason this fails. Uh, it's always nice to have a backup. This is looking at the house and making sure that it's in the appropriate state. And I listed the states here. It needs to be in the protected warning or active state. And typically it'll be in the active state, but this is to, again, to cover our bases. And then if it's in one of those states, what this is essentially signifying is that we had already ran this automation. So the house is already in sleep mode. If it is, then we do nothing. It stops right here. However, if it's not in sleep mode, it will be in one of those other three states. So we have to put the house in sleep mode so the automation can move forward. From here, it splits off into two and it does two things. Firstly, it'll go start cleaning. So it'll start the vacuum, as you see here. It'll turn off the lights, um, disable motion sensors so that way the house doesn't become super active at night. We want to turn off a lot of the stuff. The other part of this automation is the part that we've been working with from the beginning, and that is giving a summary of everything that we need to know. So this should look very familiar where we have the calendar, the render nodes or the render template, and then all of the GPT or OpenAI uh, nodes. This particular node will basically send those events to wherever I am, and it'll just read those responses out. I'm not gonna run this because it can get really involved turning off everything in the house when my wife is using everything at the moment. But um, just when I say it works, it works pretty well. Now, this is the part where I feel like this can get kind of um, awe-inspiring. If you notice here, we have the start vacuum. If you've seen my previous video on the call and register intent nodes, I did make mention of this particular node called the Lincoln link out nodes, and it basically allows you to jump from one automation to another and the register intent and call intent nodes essentially does the same thing where we can call one thing and it'll jump to another automation and start that instead. We're doing that here. And this makes sense here because this can start on its own. So if let's say we never went to bed and we kept the house going, then we have it so that way at eight, at 1 a.m., this will fire no matter what, and it'll start the house or it'll start the robot vacuum to start cleaning at 1 a.m. Now notice, we have one automation that was meant for starting the whole good night sequence, but then we have a separate automation that can technically live by itself. Like we want that to be its own thing. We don't want it to be completely attached or completely dependent upon any of the other automations. So the link in link out nodes do a good job of bridging those two things and kind of keeping them decoupled, but allowing you to utilize it. I'm going to take this concept and apply it further to our summarization automation. Realistically, our summarization automation can be used outside of any of these uh, particular use cases. I don't need it when I'm just going to bed or when I'm just waking up. I could ask for it for in the middle of the day. So I shouldn't have to be tied down to this particular trigger. Hence why these things are kind of built into pieces. The trigger doesn't matter. The trigger can be anything. To be honest, I can say, hey, what do I have on my calendar for today? And it should go through this particular automation and tell me these things. So let's do that using the AI intent nodes that we have set up. Instead of running this particular one, I'm going to show you on the one that we've been looking at from the beginning, and that's this one. What we can do is we can add here, I have a register intent node and here I name it, summarize my tasks. And then I give it this particular description, creates a summary of all the tasks, events, to do's, 
and states of all the devices in the smart home. Between the name and the description, OpenAI should be able to look at it and know when it should be called. It's good to have this stuff named pretty well and described pretty well, so that way GPT has a good chance of using it when it's supposed to be used. I'm going to make sure that it's included so that way OpenAI can see it. I also have here a change node and I'm simply removing the payload, data, and template. Just in case, because this can get called from anywhere, we don't know what's gonna be passed. And what I do know is if any of these three are passed into this particular automation, it can mess things up because all of these can be dynamically set and it looks at those particular properties to dynamically set those properties. So it's best to just make sure that they're deleted before it comes in. So that way it use what we have set here. I'm going to attach it to the call service node that starts the to-dos. I'm gonna deploy it. Something that I'm not showing you behind the scenes is that for K, K is set up so that way it does one of four things. I'll actually show you. I'll actually show you. So here's K. K is basically listening for any message that's coming from Telegram because that's how I primarily communicate with K. So whenever a message comes in from K, it's gonna immediately try to use that message and trigger the call service node, or it's gonna do the call service node. If once the call service node resolves, it's gonna resolve in one of three ways from what I've found out, there could be more, but for now, I've just found these three and these three seems to work well. One, it can be action done, which means that it was successful. In that case, nothing more needs to be done. So it just simply sends out an answer. The other part is that it can say query answer, which means I've asked it a question that it could answer. And so its job is done. My job is done and it just stops. The last one is if there's some kind of problem and that is an error. If I give the assist because it's calling assist, if assist is unable to help me or if there's some kind of error, then that particular state is sent to me and from there, I will now activate GPT. I went through these scenarios with K versus assist. Home assistant assist versus my AI chatbot named K. Let's put them against each other and see who comes out on top. You can see how both Assist and K competes against each other. Um, but essentially, this is how I can get the best of both worlds. I start with Assist. If Assist isn't able to do it, then GPT picks up the slack. And for GPT, we have these four outputs. One, commands. If I send it a command, it's going to try and call it dynamically using the call service node. I have here questions. If I simply ask it a question, it's gonna know that it's not a command and it's gonna simply answer the question and post it back to me. The other part is registered intent. If I give it a command and it comes back as, hey, I'm using or I want to call a register intent, then it needs to call this particular call register, um, call intent node. By calling that, I can call any of my register intents. This is how we can make all of these connections come together. So with that, Let's do a quick test. I'm going to tell Kay, hey, what's on the agenda for today? I expect it to interpret what I'm saying, to call that particular register intent node, and by doing so, trigger all of the automations that you've seen or that we've worked on beforehand and give me the output that I'm expecting. Let's watch. Let's watch the debug section and see what happens. Okay, this is to be expected. I'm expecting one more. Oh, there it goes, 154. And 154 is this one, which means that it ran all the way through. It made it all the way to here. So if we take a quick look, we're looking for payload object. And here we go. This is the same information that we've been seeing all the way up until this point in terms of what we have in our calendar, what we have in terms of like the battery levels, uh, the fact that for, let's see, even does it talk about the, the to-dos? There's even one to-do whose date is more than one day old, unavailable devices. It, it, it worked. 
it worked. We were able to not only create a summarization automation, we not only saw how it works in tandem with like complex triggers and outputs, but we can see that by being able to decouple these things and have these sections kind of partitioned off, especially if you know that they can be used by themselves, how you can use the register intent and call intent to combine with GPT. So GPT can now trigger these things on the fly for you. You don't need any manual trigger. You could use a manual trigger and it's best that you do have one because these systems need it. But here's how you can start to make your system more autonomous. You can just say things or tell it things and it can simply do it and it does it well. Guys, I, like I saying that this is cool is just I don't think it begins to explain the the intrigue or how I'll put it this way. Every once in a while, technology changes to a point where it introduces something so brand new and so novel that it makes, it creates a new wild west. No one knows how to use it. No one knows what to expect from it. No one knows really what expectations to have on this. And then as a result, not many people like like it's a fad, it's a hype and people kind of jump at it for a little bit. But a lot of the people who aren't enthusiasts, they fall off really quick. Like it's just a novel thing and they just kind of fall away. But enthusiasts like me and you, like we're in it and we're here, basically the gold miners searching for this gold. We're searching for the way that that all of this should be utilized and we're pioneering the expectations and the experience that will one day be the standard for everyone to use. People will come back and look at this and use this as a way to learn from our mistakes, to learn from our successes and create a smart hope ecosystem in which the masses that once were in this that but fell off will come back to use and use with more uh with use that they will use with more finality use with more assurity and it becomes a de facto standard within life we're we're here we're, this is it this is it we are exploring we're in this together let me know what you think let me know what you feel about this by please 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 go watch my other videos watch them I have so many ideas and they just keep pouring and it, it's it's um it feels I feel manic almost I feel manic because they just keep coming I talk to you guys and then more ideas come and I can't make them fast enough I can't do it fast enough I'll just keep going along watch my videos don't watch my videos it's fine I'm here even if no one else wants to be this is fun as hell so come along or don't we go on places bye oh god